Well, welcome to another Way of Wisdom segment. As we're working our way through this month, Proverbs chapter 14. I trust that you'll take uh, some time this month and, and, and spend it in Proverbs chapter 14. Uh, today we're going to be taking verses 5 through 12. I'm just going to read them and make some commentary uh, and then draw some conclusions that we can apply to our life. So Proverbs chapter 14 beginning with verse 5. A faithful witness does not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. A scoffer seeks wisdom and does not find it. But knowledge is easy to him who has understanding. I want to pause there. Build your knowledge. Continue to grow in the Word of God. Read the Word of God every day. And it will be easier as you go to gain more wisdom and more knowledge. But knowledge is easy to him who understands. Once you build a foundation of God's Scripture in your life, you're going to be able to understand far more things. So continue to read this Scripture. Continue to feed your mind the truth of God. Knowing that as you do, there's going to come a place where learning will be much easier in terms of absorbing truth. And so I love that. But knowledge is easy to him who, over, uh, who understands. God, give me an understanding heart. Verse 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man when you do not perceive in him the lips of knowledge. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Fools mock at sin. But favor, um, but among the upright there is favor. He's cautioning us here to evaluate our relationship. A fool in the scripture in Proverbs is basically someone who lives as if there is no God. They live as if they are totally on their own to do whatever they please. And there is no God to answer to. He's warning us, be very careful about having relationships with these kind of people. Now, obviously, we need to reach out to them in love and to share Jesus and the gospel with them. But don't be knit together. Don't be yoked together with the foolish, with, with those that make a mock of sin, that joke about sin, that don't take sin seriously. We live in a culture where such things as drunkenness and adultery and these kind of issues, they're laughed at and they're mocked at and people make jokes of them. They do not realize the awesome devastation of these kind of sins. So be careful who you're hanging out with, even though you want to reach out in love to all people. Be careful who you allow yourself to be knit together to. Look at verse, or with, look at verse uh, 9 again. Fools mock at sin, but among the upright there is favor. What is favor? Favor is the unmerited help of God. Favor is living in such a way that God stoops down to help you. Literally, one Hebrew word for favor has to do with stooping down to help someone, to look upon them, to help them. So live in a way that you will receive God's favor. And if you're living with those that are making a mockery of sin, if you're taking sin lightly and, and jokingly, that's not going to produce God's favor. What produces God's favor is to be awed by God, to live in the fear of God. And one scripture says the fear of God is to depart from evil, not to make a mockery of it. Well, then verse 10 talks about the heart. We're going through verse 12. Verse 10 says, The heart knows its own bitterness, and a stranger does not share its joy. The house of the wicked will be overthrown, but the tent of the upright will flourish. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Oh, keep that in mind. There is a way that seems right to men, but the end is death. That's why we, we go not by what seems good, but by what Scripture says. You can always talk yourself into something seeming good, but we need to go by what Scripture says is good or what Scripture says is not good. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. You don't have to take your chances. The Scripture will tell you what is life and what is death. The Scripture will tell us what is the way of God and what is not. And so let us be those people that seek God's favor. Let's back up a verse and close with verse 11. The house of the wicked will be overthrown, but the tent of the upright will flourish. You know, there's a time when it seems like the wicked are flourishing, when the wicked are prospering, and so we're tempted to go their way so that we can prosper. But in the end, they will be overthrown. And in the end, God says His people will flourish. So live God's way. 
Live God's wisdom. The house of the wicked will be overthrown, but the tent of the upright will flourish. Why don't you pray today? Lord, help me to live in your fear and to walk uprightly, that I might flourish. That flourish means abundantly fruitful, that you might continue to be fruitful and that it might be abundant in its fruitfulness. So God, let that be our way of life, the way of wisdom. Amen. You are worthy of it all.